Is it possible to make money sports betting if you lose more often than you win? Over the next 15 minutes, I'll prove to you that beyond doubt, as long as you take odds with positive expected value, then your chances of profitability in the long term skyrocket, even after considering the bookmaker's edge. Now lads, let me start off by saying I'm not some sports betting millionaire. I study statistics at university and for the past five years, I've helped over 10,000 people across this YouTube page and Patreon build smarter betting models, reduce risk, and develop a more data-driven mindset when sports betting using the properties of probability. If you wanna follow along with this video, then click the first link in the description below to download the notes I've compiled for this video. And also lads, before we start, please subscribe. We need to hit 10,000 by the end of the year, so you'll be doing me a huge favor. To start, let me introduce you to two hypothetical bettors. Better A wins 70% of their bets, backing heavy favorites at minus 500 odds, and better B wins just 45% of their bets on underdogs at plus 150 odds. At first glance, you may think better A and his 70% win rate sounds elite, but let's break down the numbers. If we place a $1 bet at minus 500 odds, 70% of the time, better A will win 20 cents, with the remaining 30% of instances resulting in a loss of a dollar. Using the expected value formula, better A can expect to lose 16 cents per $1 bet. So despite winning seven out of 10 bets, better A is expected to lose money long term. On the other hand, better B will win $1.50 45% of the time and lose $1.55% of the time. While he loses more often than he wins, over time, better B can expect to profit 12.5 cents per dollar bet. This is a very simple proof that win rate is not what matters in sports betting. Rather, it's about exploiting value, placing bets when the true probability of the event occurring is mispriced by the odds. That's called positive expected value or positive EV, and it's the foundation of any successful sports betting strategy. Now lads, understanding EV starts from being able to convert odds into implied probabilities. In this video, we'll work with American odds, but for my international audience, don't worry, in the notes you can download from the description, I've also got a decimal odds version of this video. Odds tell you how much you'll win, whereas probabilities tell you how likely you are to win, and that's what really matters when you're looking to place a bet. For positive American odds, like plus 150, we can use this formula. In this example, the bookmaker is saying there's a 40% chance of the outcome happening. However, for negative American odds, like minus 200, the formula flips. We take the absolute value, where you ignore the minus sign and plug it into the formula. As a result, the bookmaker is pricing that outcome to happen exactly two thirds of the time. Once you know how to calculate these probabilities, you can compare them to your own estimates. Let's say you've done your own research and believe a fighter has a 40% chance to win, but the odds being offered are plus 180. The implied probability of plus 180 is 35.71% chance, but of course the real chance is 40%. So that's a value bet, and it's exactly where positive expected value comes from. This process, spotting when a bet has a true probability higher than the implied probability from the odds, is how you find an edge and profit long term. Now lads, before we see how this profit plays out in real life, let's take a moment to look at the other side of the equation, which is the bookmaker. Because while we're working spot value, they're working to protect their edge. And the way that they do that is through something called the overround or the VIG. In a perfectly fair market where odds reflect true probabilities with no margin, the implied probabilities of all possible outcomes would have to exactly sum to 100%. That would mean the bookmaker expects to break even over time. But bookmakers aren't in the business of breaking even, they're in the business of making money. So what do they do? They set odds so that the sum of all implied probabilities in the market is more than 100%, and that's where they make their profit. Let's look at an example. So FanDuel offers the following money line odds on a baseball game. The Pirates are playing the Royals, where the Royals are favorites at minus 156 odds, and the Pirates are underdogs at plus 132. We can now convert both of those into implied probabilities using the formulas we went over earlier. So for the Pirates, that's 43.10% and for the Royals, 60.94%. When we add them both together, that returns 104.04%. That 4.04% is the bookmaker's margin, their built-in cushion to ensure profitability. Now, you might be wondering how the bookmaker actually makes a profit from this margin. 
and it all depends on how the money is distributed between the two outcomes in the betting market. If enough bettors are backing each side in proportion to their implied probability, then the bookmaker is actually able to lock in a profit no matter who wins. Let's say the total betting volume on the Pirates and Royals game is $10,000 and it's split in proportion to the implied probabilities like I said. So that would mean around $4,142.93 is bet on the Pirates, while $5,857.07 is bet on the Royals. Now if we break it down by outcome, if the Pirates win, the bookmaker pays out $5,468.67, however they collect $5,857.07 from the losing Royals bets, which means they profit $388.40. Now if the Royals win, their payout is $3,754.53, but once again they collect more from losing Pirates bets at $4,142.93, returning an exact profit again at $388.40. So it doesn't matter who wins, the bookmaker profits $388 either way, which is the power of the VIG. Now lads, you could have tuned out over the last couple of minutes, which I completely understand, but this concept is the exact reason why casual bettors will lose in the long run because they're betting against a system that's unfair in the first place. Even if you find a 50-50 match, the odds offered on both outcomes won't be even because of that margin. The VIG makes sure every bet you place on the market has a negative expected value by default. So unless you're doing your own analysis and estimating true probabilities, then you're basically betting into a rigged game. Imagine that in this game between the Pirates and the Royals, our model projects the Royals to be slight favourites at 53% while the Pirates are at 47%. Firstly, we can see if any of these bets have expected value and in this example it's the underdog, the Pittsburgh Pirates, where we can expect to win 9.04 cents per $1 bet. To show you the power of expected value in the long run, even when up against the bookmaker's margin, I've simulated the result of 1, 10, 100 and 1000 bets on the Pirates and Royals games 10,000 times each to show you the distribution of results. Of course, 10,000 simulations on a single bet on both the Pirates and the Royals returns exactly what we expect. The Pirates won 47.04% of the time, while the Royals won 52.96% of the time. If I increase the number of bets to 10, the profitability betting on the Royals drops to 22.91%, while the chance of profit betting on Pittsburgh rises to 55.05%. Now with 100 bets, betting on the Royals returns a profit only 6.58% of the time, while you have a 75.41% chance of winning money betting on the Pirates. Now finally, after 1,000 bets, the Royals are never profitable in all of the 10,000 simulations, while the Pirates had a 99.38% chance of profitability. Let me say it again lads, in the long run, expected value always wins. Now in my opinion, the greatest part about being able to visualize these simulations is realizing the role variance and luck play in sports betting. Even with Pittsburgh's solid edge and positive EV, they have a nearly 25% chance or one in four chance of losing money after 100 bets. Now this is where most bettors fail. They don't trust the maths, they hit a bad streak where they lose a few games in a row and they think their model is broken. But in reality, they just haven't placed enough bets for the law of large numbers to kick in and this is especially the case when betting on underdogs with positive EV as they have significantly more variants associated with them versus favorites. However, if you're confident in your strategy and the bets you place have a positive EV, then in the long term, that chance of profitability keeps rising. Well, once you understand how expected value behaves in the long run and you realize the crucial role variance plays in perhaps producing misleading short-term results, then the next logical step is building a model to identify opportunities where you can place a positive expected value bet. If you can identify the probability of an outcome occurring more accurately than the market, then you can go shopping for odds which are mispriced and in the long term that'll create value and a profit. For example, you'll learn how to use a Poisson model to simulate soccer scores so that you can find real probabilities of markets such as head-to-head, under-over goals or say first two, one, two, three, four, five goals 
and you'll then be able to take those probabilities, compare them to odds offered by the bookmakers and identify EV bets. Before we end the video though, it's very important to talk about the challenges and hurdles associated with sports betting, especially with a positive expected value strategy. Now it sounds ridiculous, but if you consistently beat the market and the sports books, then you might just get banned. And this isn't a conspiracy theory. It's happened a lot to successful bettors who have used this expected value or other sports betting approaches such as arbitrage to a great extent. Sports books can limit your stakes that you place with them or they can just ban your account outright. So as a result, staying within the law, most profitable sports bettors might have to spread their action across different accounts and different sports books and a lot end up having to go to betting exchanges such as Betfair. Secondly, profitable sports betting requires a time commitment and a healthy bankroll. As we saw earlier, a single EV bet means absolutely nothing. Even after 10 or 100 EV bets, if Erin's hits you hard, you're not going to be profitable. So you need to place hundreds or even thousands of bets to make sure that your EV strategy is sustainably profitable and that requires smart bankroll management as well as emotional discipline and of course patience. If you're looking forward to the next video lads then please subscribe to the channel so you get notified when it does drop. I need to hit 10,000 by the end of the year so please do me a favor and of course download the notes by clicking the first link in the description below. Thanks for watching.